Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Move Miss Day 2. We are doing the things today. Um, actually, you are seeing this on Monday, and it is Sunday, and we are preparing for a moving sale. We are just prepping a couple things around the house. Um, I'll show you a little bit what's going on. So we are still on the fence with moving the Peloton and the treadmill. It is so costly to move them. Plus they take them apart to put them back together. I'm afraid it won't get put back together well. So we're debating, do we just sell them and buy new ones when we get there? We're gonna see if we get any offers today, but we haven't decided what we're doing quite yet with our Peloton situation. We're selling some coffee makers just so they can realize that they are getting a really, really good deal. This is the DeLonghi Aletta, and this is the Nespresso. And then we are selling, not the chairs, but this our house table for a steal. This rug, because a circle table won't work in our new space. And then we're selling this console table, this side table. We're gonna see if we get an offer on the coffee table. We're not upset with taking it with us, but I think I was telling you guys before, our couch is going to face this way with the fireplace. I want something like round or different. Um, and then this is all getting professionally cleaned this week before we move it. We're selling the media stand. We are going to entertain offers on this chair. We're selling this cabinet. We're literally selling all of our furniture because we are redoing friends, as you know. Um, this rug, this console, t uh, this entryway table, and then I just have like, I either donated a lot of decor or um, uh, packed it already. So these are things that I'm still getting rid of for a steal. You can get art for 10 bucks here. Um, this I was debating on. So this is also for what it is I paid way too much for it, but this is a huge West Elm pottery bowl that they made. They made a limited edition of them. It is so heavy and nice, but I just don't, I think it's just too large. And I don't really care for it or use it that much. Bar cabinet that I DIY'd in a video years ago, already sold. Here's some news. So we have researched all the things moving this friend is going to be super hard. I am devastated by it. So we are giving it away free to a good home. We just don't know. We might take a start though from it if we can and travel with that. Uh, then we're selling a bunch of stuff here. This our house stag head just cause it's not gonna go with the new style. Um, nothing in there is for sale. And essentially everything upstairs is for sale as well. We are also, this blue velvet West Elm chair already sold. Steven's selling his desk. We're selling the Our House bookcase. We just don't want to move the things. Look at her. <gasps> Here's the sale manager. <laughs> I said, and the sale manager and the pet manager. Yeah, they're going on a play date today. I'm just going on a date. There will be no playing. Well, you'll have a play date, though. You're wearing that hat for the... Uh... No, just my hair is a mess. Uh -oh. We're taking this bed with us. We're going to DIY a new headboard on it when we get to the new house. This is already sold. We're selling this Pottery Barn side table. Everything that we're keeping, we like kind of hid over into the bedroom. In my office, I'm selling this bookcase, this chair. I'm keeping my down sofa, this West Elm office chair, my desk, this TV stand, this rug we're getting rid of. And then in here, the dresser is already sold. The bench is for sale. This bed, I like this bed a lot. It was the wrong color when I got it. And I was always going to paint it, but I never got around to it. 
but I love the shape of it so much. Yep, so that bed is getting sold. I really, really, really hope that um, we're able to get rid of a lot just so we don't have to move. Oh, we have stuff in the basement. So if you remember, during COVID, well, actually, right before COVID, Stephen and I were going to refinish our basement. Well, obviously COVID happened. The person we were working with started ghosting us. So we never, ever finished the basement. What our plan was, and like the walls are already sealed and ready to go, our plan was to put two big barn doors here so that would have all been storage and then just finish this in a straight line. We have 10 foot ceilings in here, so it would have been perfect. However, COVID hit and then Steven and I really were like, well, we never use this, like the house is big enough already. So what is for sale down here? I'm selling box lights and ring lights. I'll just buy new ones when I get there. Office chair, an old desk. That bed is already sold. I have this five by seven rug I'm selling, this eight by 10, those little small mats. This rug has already sold. This coffee table's already sold. We're selling this leather sectional. We're selling that crate and barrel TV stand that has, I mean, it was in our primary bedroom in Charlotte and I don't think it ever made it anywhere else. We might've used it in our first New York house. That TV is getting sold. Steven has some tools here that he is selling. This five by seven Magnolia rug, not from Target, actually like the Magnolia store. This eight by 10 rug, this round ruggable and ruggable mat just because I can't use um, a round rug in our new space. All of these wreaths are for sale for like pennies. This balsam hill tree, um, don't worry. We still have plenty of trees. So right here is all that I'm moving. Those still need to get bagged. Those are the two new 10 foot trees that I bought. Um, we're taking the viral Home Depot tree. We're taking our King of Christmas tree. So we'll still have more than enough trees. But I have donated all of the Christmas themes except the neutral one and this year's. I've donated all of them or friends have taken themes. Yeah, two friends took the um, uh, the the retro glam theme that I did, and then the really traditional one. So this is all that I'm taking of decor. There's like a mix of Halloween, fall, and Christmas, but this is all that's going in the new space. Um, I got rid of so much. Like this was all filled before. So that is what's going on down here in the basement. Like I said, I really hope we're able to sell some things today and get rid of them. Also look at my hat, Charlotte. I had it made. I also have one that says y'all for going back down south. All right, I'm gonna go grab some coffee. Steven's taking the dogs on their play date and then we'll catch up. And I know some of you ask, how are we running the, um, the moving cell? So we have our QR codes for Venmo. Obviously we got a bunch of cash out to make change. Everything has a post-it on it that is one color. So they'll be able to take this post-it off and then we'll put another post-it on it's sold or they'll just take the item with them. But we know what item they're bringing because some of the pieces obviously they can't carry. So everything is like labeled with a price and that's how we're doing it. It's gonna be so weird. I told Steven we might go to bed this evening with no furniture and he's like, that's what I'm afraid of. I am not afraid of that. That's what I want. All right, friends, it is 1230. The sale started at 10. Everything is sold. We actually made more than what a reseller wanted to come in and um, pay for everything. So I'm so glad we did it on our own. Our system worked. I just didn't expect like that large of a crowd at the start. Um, some people are coming back for some things. So like the kitchen table is sold. This table is sold. Our coffee table is sold. Um, someone wants to buy our sectional, but I said currently it's not for sale. We still have this chair available, um, which uh, 
there, we cleaned it with water and you're not supposed to, so it left a mark. If we don't sell it, Stephen and I just said, we're going to just have it reupholstered because we do really like the chair. Well, we, we can, you know what we can do? We can paint it like they do on trading spaces. No, that's okay. Can glue, Hildy, Hildy, Hildy can glue some paint. silk flowers to it. That is sold. We haven't sold our bookcase yet, and this is probably the piece we want to sell the most. Um, we really want it to go, so maybe we can advertise it and get it sold. Um, we didn't sell our dining room set because that's going with us, but my cabinet is sold. Some of the art is still here, but most of it is gone. Um, the rest we can donate. Media stand sold, side table sold. Essentially, all of our desks, all the furniture that I showed you guys down in the basement, all the rugs, um, the beds are all sold. The one thing I didn't anticipate with an estate sale is like people were opening drawers <laughs> and like looking through stuff. At one point I looked into the mud room and a woman was going through our bins and I said, those are just our what? shoes. I said, those are just our shoes and our dog leashes. And then someone was like, how much do you want for your toaster? And I said, no, that's not for sale. There's no post-it on it. Uh, we just ate breakfast this morning. <laughs> um, but super happy to have moved out so much of our stuff. Um, it's just so incredibly helpful. Someone bought our bedding. Someone bought the bedding off of a bed. Um, it was just like, it's such a blessing that like these things sold and like we don't have to move them. Um, and we can use the money towards the move or buying new pieces for the new house. Um, but just like such a blessing. Um, so I don't, I don't take it for granted. People are really like, people were leaving post-its on things that we weren't selling. Um, like our chairs like that aren't for sale because I want them for our dining room. Um, they left post-its with prices on things and left their numbers in case we choose to sell some other items, but it was a success. It was a little bit of a whirlwind. Steven had to man upstairs while I was manning this yeah. floor and the cash and trying to make sure people checked out before they left. Steven, I think people might have left with things that they didn't pay for, but at this point, we, you carrying it out was helpful. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's gone, thank God. We still have some stuff people put deposits down for that they need to pick up, but yeah. it's... Cool. <sighs> we should have had my mom here. She would have, she would have been a hard bargainer. She would have kept things she, in. She would have, she would have gotten this one. What basically came out of this sale from everyone, even the people who were buying things, they were like, you guys price things really low, but also our goal was to move the things. So no one actually negotiated a price for anything. Well, a couple people did. Steven had some, I guess. I didn't have anyone ask to negotiate anything. Ugh, such a good feeling. Oh, all right, friends, so I just cleaned myself up and um, uh, the last people who uh, bought stuff and then had to go get a truck and come, uh, they just came, left with their last belongings. Um, so the sale is over and hold on, let me show you. It's, it's so empty. It's crazy to like absorb it all. There are some people who are coming back um, later in the week to pick up uh, hired like professional movers to move stuff, but everything, everything that we wanted to sell has sold. It, like I was saying earlier, it is like such a blessing, but I need to share a conversation that took place towards the end of all of this. So there was this woman named Donna. She was probably in her mid sixties. Um, and she came and she bought a bunch of stuff for her, um, son's house in Kingston, um, which is in New York state, but like Hudson Valley ish, um, area. Actually, I think north of Hudson Valley. Uh, anyway, that's besides the point. So we were talking and she's like, so tell me a little bit about yourself and why are you moving? So I told her about my family and that we're moving my parents there and that my sister is, lives there and we're all going to be together as like a family and how excited we all are. Um, and she, and we were talking about like work and things like that. And Stephen was telling her a little bit and then Donna and I like just kept talking and she looked at me and she goes, I'm so proud of you. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, and she goes, your like ability and desire to reinvent. She used the word reinvent and take on something new and be so positive about it. And, um, 
embracing like the change and being brave. Uh, but it hit me. I was like, no one uses the word reinvent very often in conversation. Um, and that was the word that I picked for 2024. I've never had a moment like that where the word has been so, um, like, so like manifested in something. Um, but it just is like another reminder, which this whole process has been that, that this is like the right decision. I mean, when we step back and we think like the way that our house sold, the offer that we got, the um, parameters around the offer that we got was better than anything we could have imagined. The way we landed our house in Charlotte in the exact neighborhood we wanted to end up in. The way this sale has gone. Just the way that every piece of this move has fallen into place um, has left me feeling so blessed. But also like such a level of peace around this move that just feels different. Um, I don't know. I've just... It's been a long time since I felt like this and you guys have really been naming it. I know that several of you have named like over the past two years, you guys feel like definitely have like had a different energy to myself. And I think part of that is burnout and part of it is stress and anxiety and all of those pieces and everything just feels different. I'm letting go of some relationships and situations and things and just like giving myself the fresh start that I need. Um, I by f no means have been perfect and I made lots of mistakes. Um, but like, I feel like there's just like this real chapter closing with like so many like fresh starts and things that I've just, just really need. Um, I've said, I'm a lot. I apologize for that. Yeah. I just, what a blessing and to be given signs that it is being favored and that all things are kind of just working out um, makes me feel so good. And will there be hiccups? Yes. And we'll be chronicling them. Yes. All the disasters that will happen probably during the moving process. I'm going to share them. I will not sugarcoat it, but I think no matter the disaster or the mishaps that will come just ba just based off of having so many moving pieces, I think I'll just greet them with just positivity and just like, it is what it is. So many other things have just gone so well for this. Huh. I'm already liking the start of move, miss. Also, our process, perfect. So our process, like I told you today, I had that spreadsheet all built out. Everything is gone and sold. Um, but the idea of like the item number, the mount, people were able to just pull the post-its off and then we replaced it with a sold post-it. It's the easiest, easiest way to do it. Also, a post-it was large enough that like, if it didn't have a post-it, it was very clear that it wasn't for sale. Uh, so that was really helpful. The people kept saying, they're like, as much as you're selling, we're so shocked that like you guys are not doing this on your own, um, that you're doing this on your own and not using an estate seller. Uh, it went so smoothly. And like the process really worked. And I mean, we were busy for the first two hours. It was packed. And the the whole process of it went really well. So after they bought their item, they would bring their post-its with the item and the amount. After they cashed out, I gave them additional post-its and they went and put sold. There were a couple situations where we made some piles for people uh, just because they were buying a lot. But it worked out really, really well and it kept it really organized. And my recommendation, get a, you don't need a, I thought we would need a lot more cash to start. We actually didn't. We were able to, we probably had maybe, I'd say maybe $30 in fives, a handful of ones, and a couple 20s. Maybe it's just like two or three twenties and that was enough to get us through. And then by that time you have like a big enough cash flow, but like we really didn't need a lot. So just have some fives, some ones and some twenties. I kept everything priced in $5 increments to also make change a little bit easier. Uh, what else would I say? Having the Venmo QR codes printed out also super helpful. People really, really appreciated Venmo. And then we also did take a couple checks. Everyone seems so kind that we trusted them. But yeah, that process worked really well, but you don't need a ton of cash on hand. I think it's really smart if you can decide like, I'm just going to do $5 increments. I had maybe two items for like a buck, but everything else was like 5, 10, 15, 20. And then we just kept it that way. And it made change 
process easier. Also, the cash you were getting worked with the amounts that you were selling things for, so it was like really easy to make change and things. But it went really, really well. I think we we feel a huge sense of relief, and we essentially, well, actually, we've made enough to pay for our entire move. And buy some cute furniture, but don't tell Steven.